podium, Rosa Maria Paya Acevedo is a Cuban activist. She is the daughter of Osvaldo Paya, a leading Cuban dissident who died in a very mysterious car crash in 2012 when his car was rammed several times by another car and as lately was um, as lately was uh, found out through a commission, it turned out that the licensed car of the of the of those cars who who rammed uh, Osvaldo Paya uh, bear the government license plate. So uh, there's still some some uh, work to be done. Osvaldo Paya was a founder of the Christian Liberation Movement and received in 2002 the Sakharov Prize by the European Parliament for his work for freedom and democracy. Uh, US President Barack Obama released a statement and he praised Mr. Paya as, I quote, a tireless champion for greater civic and human rights in Cuba, unquote. The European Union issued a statement recognizing <coughs> Paya's dedication to the cause of democracy and human rights in Cuba. Rosa is walking in the, her father's footsteps and has been touring the world asking for an inquiry on her father's death. Threatened by the Cuban government, she was forced to flee from Cuba during this summer, 2013, and she is now living in the U.S. So please, let, let us hear your statement. Thank you so much. And especially thank you, ladies, for the opportunity, and Hillel, thank you. I have to read because my English is not exactly good. In a communist Cuba, you cannot take uh, English in the kindergarten, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I come from a country where there are many kinds of discrimination, race discrimination, ideological discrimination, regionalistic discrimination, religious discrimination, sexual orientation discrimination, and also gender discrimination, especially suffered by women. My country has become a sex destination, mainly but not exclusively for European men. The former president, Fidel Castro, for instance, publicly boasted that Cuba had the most healthy and educated prostitutes in the world. He actually dared to say that publicly. What the government does not mention is that there is a high rate of domestic violence and a high rate of the incidence of HIV in the Cuban population. Many could talk about cultural reasons, but the main root of all discriminations in Cuba is the political apartheid that prevents freedom of association, freedom of expression, and the choice for our citizens to fight against all kinds of discriminations. In this world, this world, the democratic world, it's natural to be part of a political party or an association or an ecological movement. But now, please imagine a place where the only organization allowed are directed or controlled by the government, and the only party allowed is the so-called communist. While members of the other not allowed organizations can be expelled from their jobs or studies and can be discriminated and can receive death, death threats, violent aggressions, jail, and in some cases can be killed. In this world, it's natural, it's natural to leave your country and to come back whenever you want. And if any citizen has said ticket to fly. No legitimate government can prevent you to enter to your own country. But imagine a place where your passport is not a right than, that belongs to you, 
your passport is an exit entry permission from the government denies if they want to do it. And it happens sometimes that the government denies you to go, to go out because you are a young professional, or they will deny you to enter because you are a doctor who quit it during an, during an international mission, for instance, or just because you have some relative in the position movement. A few days ago, the Cuban government prohibited a, room, a woman from the Pacific Organization, Ladies in White, to travel to her own country so that she could see her father die, as he finally died without seeing his daughter for the last time. In this world, it's natural to use internet for communication, to pay bills, to locate any place, to study at distance, to see the news, and a big and complex, etc. But imagine a place where most of the population has not internet access at all. Actually, they have not computed at all. In this war, it's natural that if you are the owner of a small and honest business and you pay taxes, no one can take your property from you. But now imagine a place where the government can immediately close any private enterprise, no matter how big or small or honest it could be. In this world are very frequent the student demonstrations against certain police or leaders. But imagine a place where anybody can be expelled from the university immediately if he or she say anything against the government or just criticize the system. Here it's natural that when an election comes, the people choose between several candidates, whether parties or persons. And now imagine that I live in a place where there is just one candidate for any position or for each position. And now imagine that this place is known as the island of freedom. And the head of the government is venerated as an idol in many parts of the planet. As there are a lot of good people confused by the propaganda of our government while the Cuban people remain marginalized. It is time for the world to stop imagining what is going on inside Cuba and start realizing that we are millions of human beings without human rights. We are not talking about political colors or ideologies. The dictators are not from the left or from the right. Dicta dictators are just criminals. And all persons of goodwill, no matter what the flag, must stand in favor of the fundamental rights for all. My father, Oswaldo Paya, is the founder of the Liberation Christian Movement. In 2002, he won the Saharov Prize from the European Parliament. And he struggled peacefully for the recognition in the law and in the practice of the right of all Cubans to have rights. He has warned of the danger that totalitarianism in Cuba represent for democracy throughout Latin America. Because maybe, maybe from Austria, you, maybe you couldn't see, but democracy in our region could be a very weak construction. My father promoted a referendum known as the Varela Project, which has the support of more than 25,000 citizens, 
more than those requested by our Constitution. Ten years later, the Cuban government still refused to answer the citizen's call for a plebiscite, violating their own constitution. My father died last year during an attack in which Harold Sepero, a very young leader at the Christian Liberation Movement, also died. Harold was 32 years old. It is known that cars from the Cuban state security were chasing them and that his car was pushed out from the, of the highway. War leaders have demanded an independent investigation of, after the contradictory version given by the Cuban government, whose representative in the United Nations refused to allow this investigation as it was requested during the last UPR in the Human Rights Council of UN. Cubans know that only we are responsible to lead our country toward a democratic transition. And we know that this is the moment to act, and we are acting. As my father and Harold were doing to the very moment that the government took their life. But Cubans need the international community to send a message against the impunity of the government. A message of solidarity with the peaceful solution that the citizens are proposing. There was a plebiscite in Chile because Chileans demanded, but also thanks to the huge international pressure over the Pinochet dictatorship. The Cuban people deserve as much as the Chilean people and as much as the European people. As my father used to say, the cause of human rights is only one, as only one is the humanity. The international community, United Nations, and the European Union can save many lives and they can also prevent the spread of the anti-democratic thinking in our region if they act in solidarity with the rights of women and for the rights of all who suffer of any kind of oppression. Democracies must fight the injustice with she, which many women are silenced and marginalized in the world. Democracies should help in giving voice to those who cannot raise their voices. The challenge is to put the real peace guaranteed by the respect to the human rights before the idea of the stability, which is just useful to make business. The challenge is to put the person before is to look the citizen and not just to look the power. Thank you so much. <laughs>